busca en diferentes direcciones. Sí, sí, son varias sí. cosas. Sí, ah, pero... Sí, porque Char, me preguntaron. Char, charro, churro, churrito, porque ya hay. Ya, ¿Sí? ya hay... <risa> ya está el teacher. Ya, ya está el teacher. <risa> ya ahorita no, no pueden fusilar. Charro, churro. <risa> no, pero Sara, échale ganas. Sí, gracias. Good evening, teacher. Hello, students. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hello, guys. Welcome. So, how are you? Fine. Great. Great. Yes. That's awesome. So, you are taking this time because we will we we'll start. So, I don't know if you have the, the opportunity to share how was your, um, your day? Was good? Was bad? How do you feel? So, how was your day? Very tired, teacher. The work hard. Yeah. Hard work. Yeah, and also because we are in, we are on on Tuesday, so tomorrow will be the half of the week. So, yeah, we need yeah. to recover energy. Definitely, <laughs> so we need to recover energy. But if that's okay, but everything positive in your job, everything positive. Motivated. Yes. Tell me about it. Try to speak. That's the way, guys. Yes. Okay, uh, some students are joining right now to our class. And um, as we say, we need to practice. We need to practice, we need to study and take this time to you know improve and also work in the English skills. As you know, the four main skills are necessary, especially when we're learning English. And uh, we learn step-by-step step in the process. It's not a day at night that you will learn English. So it's a process, but also it requires your time to practice. It requires dedication and also requires motivation because the motivation is the most important. So that's why it, we had to always, always show the best because we are the best. That's why we are here. So before that we start the class, I just want to ask you, what do you remember about the, the yesterday's class? What we did, what do you remember we did in the class, guys? Tell me, you are good for this. Cool tools. Hi, yes. What we did? Or what we talk about? Okay. Crossing culture, teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. And what what was about? Tell me about crossing culture. So, what, what do you remember we discussed in our conversations? Yes. What we discussed.
Okay, who wants to help me with that? Yes, yes. Hello, hello. No one? Comfort. Comfortable, confident, curious, depressed. For example. Uh -huh. Excellent. Excited. Uh -huh. Nervous. That makes sense to me. That's right. If you remember, yesterday we were discussing about vocabulary, especially vocabulary when people, they travel to other countries and they um they miss the country. For example, uh, we were saying that there were there are some people who travel to U.S. or Europe or some other countries and they miss El Salvador. They say, you know what? I miss El Salvador because it's a beautiful country. Everything is near. We have the beach, the rivers, the lake. We have everything around us. People are friendly. The food is delicious. So we miss El Salvador and we would like to go back to our country. So most of the time we talk about people and who travel to other countries and they live uh, for some time. But most important is to discuss about in, uh, how people they um feel like homesick because they would like to come back and live in, in the country. So we were talking about that and especially the decisions that people make to you know to travel and live in a different country. We have we also have some possible destinations when traveling and we understand that you know we have to you know get experience about that. Some of you said in groups that you have traveled some mothers said that, that you haven't traveled yet, but someday there's a possibility to travel um, somewhere, an interesting place or interesting country. And today we're going to talk about the following topic. This topic is related to noun phrases containing relative clauses. We have studied this one before during the courses, and we know that the noun phrases are, are really important in a sentence, in a statement. And also, in, uh, as part of the known phrases that are relative clauses, we have uh, who, that, which are called the relative clauses. You know, uh, for example, we could say uh, Raquel Arely Santos, the lady who studies English at nine. Ah, okay, you know the person. So we used um, the relative clauses to give a reference. You know, uh, you're talking about Aneida, yeah. And Ada, the 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 girl who who speaks more than three languages. Oh, you're saying, oh my God! So in that case, we use relative relative clauses to connect ideas or statements. In that in that case, we also use it to uh to give a reference about a person. Oh, is the person that speaks English? Oh, is the lady that you know travels to United States? Oh, is the man who it uh, speaks English, French, and German. Oh, uh, my friend is the one who um likes computers. So we have um the relative closest, especially when we try to give a reference about a person or a thing. But we will see the structures. Okay, so we have here the following topic that is the noun phrases containing uh relative closes. In that case, we have as a subject, as a, as a feedback, and also as an object. We were saying that we use as a subject when the uh, who or that becomes the main, the subject. So the who or that becomes the subject in the sentence. And also as an object, we are talking about something that is mentioned in the, in the sentence, but it's not the subject. So we are going to compare both sides here as part of the review of the class. Como vemos acá, tenemos que están los eh, relative clauses como sujeto. Es decir, cuando yo digo un sujeto, me refiero a que esa palabra va a ser sustitución de Carlos, de Juan, de Pedrito. En este caso se convierte en una frase, right? Y cuando lo usamos como un object, ya este who, that, eh, ya no va como un sujeto, sino que va como de quien se habla o de que se habla. Es el objeto, como dice la palabra, no es el sujeto, sino que es el objeto de que se menciona a través de una frase. Veamos el primer ejemplo acerca de as a subject. So, we just remember the rules. Okay, who wants to help me to read the first part here? 
about as a subject? I need a volunteer who can help me with that. Me yes. teacher. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes. One thing that I like that I really miss is my mom's cooking. Something that I be nervous about is making new friends. Two people, two or I am sorry, two people who I um email very day are my parents. That? Exactly. Thank you so much for that. So we can appreciate here the first example is one thing that in that case that becomes the subject. So one thing that I really missed hasta donde vemos que está en negrito ese se convierte como eh, un noun phrase right en este caso se convierte como un noun phrase toda esa frase one thing that I really missed es como el sujeto y luego dice is my mom's cooking y como vemos que is es el verbo entonces ahí comienza el predicado right so simple as in Spanish in English is the same En una oración, cuando el verbo continúa, pues automáticamente es el predicado. Comienza con el verbo. Entonces vemos que está that, entre paréntesis. ¿Por qué entre paréntesis? Es porque that se puede, puede ser utilizada como un complemento. Es decir, por eso está en paréntesis, porque si yo quiero lo pongo y si no, no lo pongo. Y cuando me refiero a that, es, me refiero a eso. Una, eh, una cosa que, en este caso that, se convierte como decir que, right? One thing that I really missed is my mom cooking, right? So you can see the example. And next one, as she said, uh, sometimes something that in parentheses because it's optional to use it or not. Es decir, si lo, está that porque si yo quiero lo puedo utilizar como un complemento. O sea, en parentheses, si lo quiero usar o no lo uso, es opcional. Oh, something that I be nervous about is making new friends. Entonces vemos ahí que ya la oración ya lleva el complemento y ahí hace la función de un sujeto. Two people who, or that, because we can use both in that case when we're talking about people or situations, we can use who or that. En este caso, dos personas que o quien eh, yo les eh, enviaría correos todos los días son mis padres. Entonces, por eso está who or that, porque ambas pueden ser utilizadas. Both can be used, especially when we want to use them as part of a relative closest, because all of, all of this is a noun phrase. And also, you can check in the, in the other sides about the, the object as an object. In este caso, como un objeto ya no va a ir al inicio, porque ya es función de un objeto, ya no es tanto el sujeto. My mom's cooking is one thing that I really missed. Entonces, vemos acá que cambió el, el orden. La cocina, de, o la cocina de mi mamá eh, es one thing that I really missed. Entonces, Ya el complemento ya es, is one thing that I really miss. Entonces ya se convierte como un, un objeto. Le dimos vuelta a la oración, ¿verdad? Lo que era sujeto ahora es objeto y lo que era objeto antes es sujeto. Entonces como cambia. Making new friends is something that I, I feel nervous about. Making new friends, ahora making new friends, es, es ahora el sujeto. Y el complemento is something that I'll be nervous about. Es algo que yo, en lo que yo me sentiría nervioso. Entonces, vemos ahí que el that está en paréntesis porque es opción y porque ahora es un objeto. And the last one is like, my parents are two people who are that I'll email every day. So the position about the statement changes. Automatically, the, ob the subject becomes an object in a sentence. And that is the way how the statements change. So we can see some other examples that could be very helpful for us to understand or at least to practice. Look at this one. Uh, one second. Okay. Much Mr. Chair, good evening. I have a question. Yep. In the United States, it is more common to use it as a subject or object? Is is the same. I mean, it's it's not um that it, what is the most common is is grammar. So grammar is used in the in all structures. So in that case, um, it's a an order of a sentence. So mm -hmm. you can use it all the time, everywhere you want. 
It's okay. an state of, yeah, it's an state of a sentence. So you can use it in all the structures. Okay. Yes. Okay, look at the following examples so they, they can be very helpful for us to practice. Complete the sentences about living in a foreign country and use the phrases below. Then compare with the partner. My friends, trying new foods, making new friends, getting lost in a, in a new city. My family, my favorite food, being away from home, not understanding people, getting sick, my room at home, speaking a new language, or getting used to different cultures. Y vemos ahí el ejemplo. One thing that I definitely be fascinated is... ¿Y cuál frase cree que va usted ahí? A ver, ¿quién me ayuda? Why, one thing I definitely be fascinated is... Making new friends, uh -huh. for example. Ok, making new friends. Ok, that, that would be a good statement. Y si yo les preguntara, ¿a dónde podría ir el dad? Eh, eh, ¿A dónde? ¿En qué parte podría ir? El relative close. ¿Dónde podría ir el relative close ahí? One thing, one thing that I After definitely one thing. be. Ah, ok. That, that's interesting, right? Entonces podría ir acá. One thing that I'll definitely be fascinated by is making new friends because I'm a little child and I don't like to speak with people. I, I don't like to communicate people that I don't know. That could be one example about it. Number two, um, it's something that I really missed. Entonces, ¿cómo podría ser la primera parte? Um, vemos como que ahí este... Está haciendo función, eh, it's something that I really missed. ¿Cómo sería entonces? ¿Cuál podríamos utilizar para el número dos? Es algo que realmente extrañaría. ¿El qué sería? I think it could be my favorite food because yes. we have pupusas here in El Salvador. <laughs> and another country maybe we don't have that. Yeah, in other countries, you can find other dishes. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I think it would be my favorite food. My favorite food is, it's my favorite food. It's something um, I really missed. Y entonces, ¿dónde iría? ¿Dónde podría ir el definitely, uh, the relative closed? Relative closed. It's something that I really miss. Yes, it's my favorite mood. food. Food is not uh, relative closed. Right. Mm -hmm. No, en la primera parte no iría. In the first part, we wouldn't add it. Iría en esta segunda parte, pero ¿en qué parte exclusivamente podría ir a relative close? After something. Ah, okay. Yes. And we're going to use red to separate it. So we say... Uh, my favorite food, it's something that, that, that I really missed, right? Um, mi comida favorita es algo que, que, en este caso ahí incluye, que realmente extrañaría, right? So, my favorite food is something that I really missed. And also, we have the statement here. Yes, that, that makes sense to me. So, we say it's, um, let's see... It's something. It's something that they really missed. Okay, look at this. Okay, so it's something that I really missed. And we use the relative close. Okay, look at the number three and help me to check what, what possible answer is that one. And also, you can help me to check. Ayúdeme con número tres. My room at home, teacher. Oh yeah, tell me, tell me. The thing, I'll, I'll be homesick for our, my room at home and my family. Mm -hmm. Okay, two things that, two things? Two things that. Okay, two things that. I'll be homesick for our 
Ok. Ok. ¿Y qué, qué palabra cree que puede, qué frase podría ir ahí? My family or my friends. Ok. Yes. Yeah, definitely. In that case, when we're using the word homesick, it's like uh, when we are a kind of blue, right? When we are sad because our relatives are not with us. Entonces, ahí vemos la palabra homesick. Ok, en este caso, pues decíamos, uh, two, uh, two things that I've been homesick are for my family and friends, so you know how it is. Ok, look at that one. And look at the next one, number four. Ayúdame con el número cuatro. Um, are two things that I'd be anxious about. Entonces, ¿cuál sería esa parte? Hey, okay, help me with the number four. Check the number four. Which statement we can include? Maybe... For example, DJ... <laughs> For example, um, speaking a new language and getting used it to a different culture are two things I'd be anxious about. Mm -hmm. Or I or that I'd be anxious about. Excellent. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to try to write it. The I'd be anxious about. Okay. And also, I love this phrase. Are the things that I be anxious about? Okay. Y ahí vemos que agregamos el that, right? So we can use that in that case in the sentence. That's okay. That may, that makes sense to me. Y ahí vemos que le agregamos el that como parte de un relative closed y que lo utilizamos para una frase, ya sea si es para sujeto o si es para objeto. Entonces, eh, la práctica es la diferencia y cuando lo estamos usando constantemente, ya se vuelve bastante natural eh, para nosotros. Yes. Yes, it's very interesting because I like um, use using that that noun phrases as a object. It is automatically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, yes. Mm -hmm. So, that, that's very interesting because we also can um, or practice uh, time by time. So, perhaps at, at the beginning it's like a little bit complicated, but with the practice we can use it. Entonces, una recomendación que le doy siempre es cuando tengamos una estructura gramatical, tratemos de darle uso mm, yeah. después de terminar una, un curso o una clase. Estarlo practicando porque esa es la, la situación. A veces lo vemos y ya lo vi y ya después, ya la tres, cuatro semanas, ya se me olvidó. Pero yo le pregunto, ¿y repasó el tema? ¿Hizo alguna oración por lo menos? ¿Se formuló alguna pregunta de ese tema? Es decir, después que lo estudiamos, comenzamos como a relacionarlo, a ponerlo ya en práctica. Ya, entonces, esa es una de las claves. Que a veces uno de los errores de los estudiantes es... Ven un tema de gramática. Ah, el present continuous. Va a el present. Ah, sí. We use present continuous to talk about something that is happening at the time of speaking. Y ya de repente, y, y, y después se me olvidó porque ya no lo practiqué. Y ahí, ¿te acuerdas del presente continuo? No, no me acuerdo. Entonces, eso es importante. Es un like a, a practice. Número cinco. Dice, something that will depress me is... ¿Qué sería? El otro es Something that would depress me is that getting lost in a new city. Getting lost. Getting lost in a city. In a new city. Oh, in a new city. Okay. Yeah. Okay, entonces dice acá algo que, eh, okay. Okay, something that would depress me is that I'm getting lost in the city. Algo que, ahí vemos que ya está el dat, el dat ya está agregado ahí, entonces nos salió barato. Miren okay. qué ofertón, ya está el dat ahí, entonces decimos algo que, pues, 
que pues me deprimiría es perderme en una nueva ciudad, right? In a place that you don't know, y de repente no anda para el taxi y está en otra ciudad ahí. <laughs> that would be challenging for people doing that. It's a panic. Yeah, it's panic because you don't know. Also, depending where you are, because there are cities that are a little dangerous. Imagínese que sea otro país y una ciudad pues que pues, sea un poquito peligrosa, a little dangerous. Perhaps you are like, you know what? What should I do? Because it's a new place for me. Or especially when their cities are very big. O cuando las ciudades son grandes, porque hay unas ciudades que son súper grandes y son gigantes en comparación a nuestro país. Well, so let's see. Number six. Help me with the number six. So volunteers and also guys try to practice. It's something that I might be embarrassed about. Help me with that, please. Think about it. What the best sentence for you? Okay, try to formulate the sustainment. It's something that, ahí está el dat, también ya nos, nos da el dat, así que ya está ahí. Entonces solo tenemos que buscar la oración que realmente nos complete ahí. For example, mm. not understanding people, understanding people. people is one thing that I might be embarrassed about. Yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense to me. You're speaking with someone or a foreigner. What? Yes, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, I don't understand. Do you speak Spanish? I mean, so he's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. like, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. And, and also what I really love is like, sometimes people, um, they go to your city and they ask you for an address. Even though that you live there, you don't know the address at all and because you know how to go there, but you don't know specifically the address for the block. And they ask about that and they say like, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. Eh, pues eso sí sería embarrassed, or for example, que le pregunten, eh, den, donde usted vive, le den una dirección y que usted no la conozca. Y usted, no, de pena va a decir, no, si yo, yo no vivo aquí. <laughs> I don't know. But that would be embarrassed because, you know, they ask you for an address about your city and you don't know. Le piden una dirección de donde usted vive y usted, ni usted sabe dónde queda ese, ese lugar. No sé dónde está esa colonia. Y aquí vive, sí, aquí vivo. So people say that. So that would be embarrassed. You know, that makes sense to me. Okay, so number seven. Look at the number seven here. Number seven. The most uncomfortable, the most uncomfortable thing will be. What was the, what would the thing is that? The most uncomfortable Is that comfortable e uncomfortable? The most uncomfortable thing would be, what do you think could be the possible answer about it? For example, speaking a new language. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Maybe getting sick. Getting sick. Mm -hmm. Or getting oh. sick. Yeah, getting sick. Yes, that's right. That is actually a good example here. Yeah, what else you can include? Trying new foods also. Um, and perhaps try something, but you don't like it. Because when you go to a restaurant and you eat a delicious food, you're like, oh my God, this is delicious. But you are, get something to eat that is, you don't like it, doesn't taste good. It will be a little bit embarrassing. Que de repente mm -hmm. le den algo de comer, pero a usted no le gusta. Y como está en una visita, tiene que comerse. No sé si ya les ha pasado okay. eso. O cuando va a otro país y su estómago no está acostumbrado a esa comida, ah, seguro you pasa get sick. uncomfortable. Yeah, uncomfortable with a stomach ache <laughs> or you need to go to the bathroom and you don't like yes. it. So I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, but you cannot say that, you cannot refuse the food. Es decir, ya como a comer, pues no puede rechazar la comida, right? Because it would be a little bit disrespectful. You had to yes. say, oh, that, the, the food is delicious. Wow. <laughs> yes. Y le dicen, mira, le vamos a dar más. No, así está bien, gracias. Sí, para llevar. <laughs> so people say that. So anyway, that's, um, that's something that perhaps could be a little uncomfortable in that case. All right. So number eight, uh, help me with the number eight and try to follow the trace about this one. 
So it says that it's something from home that ya viene el dat ahí agregado that I never miss. Es algo de, de, de casa que yo nunca olvidaría. Algo que, que, que usted dice es que yo desde mi casa, de mi casa, esto no, no lo voy a olvidar jamás. ¿Qué, qué sería? My room at home. Yes. Yeah. Teacher, dice que nunca extrañaría. I mean, it says, so, it's something from home that I never miss. O sea, que nunca eh, o, o, olvidaría. En este caso, como decíamos, missed. Extrañar, olvidar, es decir, eh, usted siempre lo va a tener presente. ¿Qué sería? Los neighbors, <laughs> los neighbors, the weather, I don't know. I have the some family. friends. My, okay. Mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. Look at this one. Um, okay. So what else? Think about it. Also, the food. There's some other things that maybe we can talk about. Number nine, look at the number nine here. So let's see what happened. One thing, look at this one, number nine. Read. Okay, number nine. One thing that is I'd be insecure about is making new friends, for example, another country. Okay, so looks great, definitely. So look at that one in that case, so we can appreciate that um that part is is very is very interesting, right? Insecure about us. Una cosa en la que yo estaría inseguro es, es you, you know, what possible thing could be. Making new friends. Making mm -hmm. new friends, you'll be a little insecure, un poquito inseguro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another one. Being away from Perhaps home, do you think? Being away from home. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's one, yeah. And what else? Not understanding people? Or getting used to a different culture? Because you... Well, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Un poquito inseguro, pues, este, acostumbrarse a una cultura diferente, right? Uh, different cultures, traditions, also people, what people do. So, not religion or religious people, I don't know about it. And the last one is like, are two things that I'd be very enthusiastic about. And the, what will be the first point? In my opinion, one of them could be speaking a new language. And maybe the other one could be trying new food. Like trying new food and speaking a, a new language are two things that I'd be very enthusiastic about. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Yes, uh, that I'd be very enthusiastic. Try a new language. Yeah, that would be great. Or, you know, okay, getting used to a different cultures. Yeah, another opinion about it. Okay, someone else would like to say something about it. Another volunteer. About the last one, number 10. No one? Hello? 
No one else? Okay. So is, is it's that clear this part? Or you have a question? You, you can ask the questions if you have. It's clear, teacher, to me. Thank you. Someone else? Yes, teacher, it's good. All right, so let's continue with the next part. The, the, the following exercise we have here, it's a little bit similar because we're talking about relative closest. And it's a little simple in comparison to the previous exercises. What we have to do right now is that we're going to try to complete these statements using the appropriate relative close, like which, what, who, and where. So you will read the statement and you will try to complete it using the correct relative. Okay, so let's try with this one. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Let's go. Teacher que es tecnofobia. Maybe fobia la tecnología, quizás. Hello. Hi. <laughs> yes. Eh, no, aquí tenía la pregunta de qué es tecnofobia. Oh, yeah, it's a person that doesn't like technology, avoids technology or try not to have contact with electronic devices or technology. No, pues no, Raquel, nos equivocamos porque yo pensé lo mismo. <risa> pero pero creo que es algo así como las personas mayores que no les gusta usar esos teléfonos inteligentes esas las computadoras una tecnofobia sí es que de hecho sí tecno es, es es una persona que le tiene miedo no le gusta o evita nuevas tecnologías tecnofobia some... oh, como hey. las personas mayores verdad teche bueno yo yo eh, yeah. they, que no les gusta They say that they don't understand. Dicen que no uh -huh. entienden y se cierran de que no, no lo pueden usar. Eso no es para mí, dicen.
Okay, almost ready? Or not yet? No yet, teacher. Okay, perfect. So take your time and then we will have the opportunity to share the possible answers we have here together. So take your time. Thank you.
Okay, ready now? Yes. Let's see here. Okay, so we're gonna switch uh, screen because I need also to um, write here the examples. Okay. Okay, let me share with you my screen so you can help me to compare the answers right now. Okay, look at the first one. A new, I have a friend. What do you think could be the possible answer here? Who? Who? Using, I will use capital letter to, you know. I have a friend who <clears throat> speaks. Yeah. Okay, who speaks uh, for languages, right? Tengo un amigo quien habla cuatro idiomas, okay? Great job. Next one. The internet is a place Which where, 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 where you can get cheap technology products. Right. So it's like in a store. So you can go there and you can buy some products in cheaper prices. Okay. So in that case, we choose where. Perfect. That makes sense to me here. Okay. Emails. Um, and then it says advertise. Mm-hmm. Which can, which can be wish? No. Uh, emails. Mm -hmm. Emails. What? Adver Advertise. Okay. Emails. Um, also could be used that too. It's not there, but also we can use that too. Emails that advertise things are called spam. A techno, yeah, and also that's that's good, right? Eh, tiene sentido para mí esto. Eh, oh, emails which advertise, también podemos utilizar el which, why not, el cual, eh, you know, anuncia eh, cosas llamadas spam. At, yeah, so, and the next one. Um, Oh, emails, what, you know, that's the best one. A technophobe is someone. Who, who is a scare? Who, yeah, we're talking about the person, right? So someone who is, is scared of technology. We should only buy products. Which... Okay. What? Or wait. Which can be recycled. So you can see here the possible example we have. So we're gonna try to to mow this one. So we are using the best choice for this statement. We're gonna try to mow everything up. Yeah, in this one. Much better here. Okay. So we should buy we should only buy products which can be recycled. Um, and that's the shop. That's the shop. Where? Where, where, where I bought those shoes. Those shoes. Right. Donde compré, right? Esa es la tienda donde compré esos zapatos. So, uh, yeah, we can see the example here. I, I agree with this. And the next one. I can't find the CD. What I borrowed. Which, which I borrow, o oh, incluso aquí no está, pero eh, este nos quedaría súper bien, right? That. that I borrow, es decir, que compré, que yo presté, te presté a ti. Entonces, so I can find, and also we can use also which here. So, I, are you, do you remember the park? Where? 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 Oh, <laughs> where uh, we met, right? So that makes sense. <laughs> so look at that one. And the next one is where, uh, well, there were three people. Había tres personas. There were three people at the party. Who? Who knew? Who, who knew oh, me? Who, quien es me Habían tres personas en la fiesta que, quienes me conocían o quienes me conocieron. Mm -hmm. Okay, who knew me, right? Knew. So, and the last one. I want to see the film. Which everybody talking about. Mm -hmm. Which, okay. 
Okay, so look at that one, which Amber is talking about. Okay, so we can use also to complete the statement here is about practicing. And also, as I said, something that we could have added is that because that is uh, very interesting. Okay. Okay, so we can talk about it. All right, so let's continue with the next part before we conclude the class and I will share and also the next activity. Going abroad is a discussion. So read equations and think of two or more equations to add to the list. Then take turns asking and answering the equations in group. If you could live in a foreign country, what country would you like to live in and why? Um, or what country wouldn't you like to live in and why? So who is the person you would most like to go abroad with? What is something you would never travel without? Who is the person you would email first after arriving somewhere new? What uh, would be your two greatest concerns about living abroad? What is the thing you would enjoy the most about living abroad? So you can see here those questions. So we're going to try to read the questions and think of two more questions to add to the list. Okay, in the siguiente actividad, and I think the time, and because of the time, will be a little bit challenging to take. Eh, vamos a elegir algunas preguntas. Vemos todas estas preguntas que están acá y va a pensar de dos o más preguntas que usted le gustaría agregar a la lista. Luego va a hacer preguntas a sus compañeros. Entonces, elija algunas preguntas que usted le gustaría compartir con su compañero que le gustaría hacer. Por ejemplo, Brigitte. De quisiera hacer la pregunta, a Elvis, what would be your two greatest concerns about living abroad? O Jaime le quisiera preguntar a Karen, if you could live in a foreign country, what country would you like to live in? Entonces, vamos a tomar un tiempo para poder contestar estas preguntas. Así que, mientras ustedes eligen las preguntas y las posibles respuestas, luego estaré, lo, los socializaremos con los grupos. Así que, and we're going to take this time for this. Okay, uh, taking advantage of all the time, we're going to in, check the attendance list. So if you allow me, I will um, stop sharing the screen and I send it to you by WhatsApp, the picture of this question so you can look your WhatsApp, check, and then we will socialize the answers. Look at this.
Ok, vamos a pasar a la asistencia. Eh, Brigitte Lisette Erasmo. Present teacher. Thanks. Eh, Carmen Guadalupe Escamilla. Carmen. Ok, ok. Eh, César Alexander Ramírez. Present teacher. Thank you. Dina Elizabeth Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Edith Araceli Guzmán. Present teacher. Thanks. Eduardo Alexander Díaz. Present teacher. Thanks. Elvis Aníbal Rauda. Present teacher. Thank you. Emerson Alexander Mejía. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, Eneida Yamilet González. Present teacher. Thank you. Jaime Roberto Aldana. Present. Thanks. Javier Ernesto Lucero. Present. Thanks. Eh, Karen Zuleima Ciseña. Present. Thanks. Laura Michelle Arce. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, María Catalina Corea. María. Marvin Fernando Marcel. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Morena Guadalupe Fuentes. Present teacher. Thanks. Um, Oscar Alberto Rodríguez. Oscar. Uh, Raquel Arely Santos. Present teacher. Thanks. Uh, Santiago Antonio Chávez. Present teacher. Thanks. Um, Sara. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, students, we're about to finish our class. I'm checking the time. So, well, we'll continue tomorrow at the, at first, at the beginning of the class. We will retake these questions and we will take a, a break, a room, and we will socialize some possible answers. So, if you can study the questions and try to give them a possible answer, that will be awesome to have it. So, it's going to be easier for you guys to share your ideas about this question. So, thank you so much for the participation because you have been actively uh, participating so great job and i hope to see you tomorrow and have a beautiful night to all of you guys thank you thank teacher you too, you thank too. You. take care have a beautiful night, night to all of you have a beautiful night guys Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you, teacher, thank you for your so much. Good night. Bye -bye. take care